Don't do what I did. I broke it. Okay, so today we're gonna do the one year look back on the Old Man Emu BP-51 suspension kit. That is hard to say fast. We've learned the good, we've learned the bad, and unfortunately, just recently, we learned something very ugly about it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you are gonna use this kit, I, it's actually still a very great suspension kit. I, uh, I really personally like it, but there are some keys to how it's installed. Um, and if you don't make an adjustment that's definitely not a part of the instructions, you can have a failure. So I'll walk you guys through that. Um, but yeah, looking back at it for a year, it is a really good kit. And that word kit I do think is key. Right now there's a lot of people that are trying to get into overlanding and they want an upgraded suspension. They want to get that two and a half inches of lift to be able to put on a larger tire. The Old Man Emu uh, BP-51 kit comes with leaf springs. It comes with all the pieces that you need to do the entire installation. Uh, so if you're brand new to overlanding and you're trying to do an upgrade, it can be really intimidating to try to piece together your own kit. Um, so it's, it's a kit that makes it very convenient. It's bolt on, um, kind of removes a lot of the mystery. It will seem like it is priced pretty expensive sometimes because of that. Because a lot of times people will compare the BP-51 kit to say, uh, just four Bilstein shocks, for example. And they'll go, oh man, that old man emu is really expensive. And it's like, well, that's not the whole story because even if you bought those other shocks, a lot of times you are still gonna have to change out the leaf springs and things like that. So make sure when you're pricing out kits uh, versus individual components, you're pricing out the whole entire everything you need for installation versus a kit. And then the kits generally start to seem a little more affordable. This kit is generally put up against about a level four icon, like a stage four icon. Um, there's a lot of forums. Everybody has their brand prejudices and everything. Um, I'm not actually an ARB homer in any way, so I'm not gonna pull for these guys over somebody else. I have ridden in the Icon Stage 4s, and I can definitely say that this provides a much better ride than the Icon Stage 4. Uh, by the time you go into the Icon Stage 5 kits that are out there, then you have upper control arms, and all of a sudden it starts to get really hard to price compare these to each other because we're you're going in different directions as far as features. Um, so it's not like I could really say, hey, it's better than a Stage 6, or it's worse than a Stage 9, or you start to go in very different um, directions at that point. Um, this kit does not come with upper control arms. You can use your standard factory upper control arms on a Tundra. This is very specific to a Tundra. If you are looking at this kit for a Tacoma or a Forerunner, usually that's not true. Usually you're gonna be upgrading your upper control arms. Uh, when I put this kit on a Forerunner, I upgraded my upper control arm. But long story short, this kit, you do not have to do your upper control arms. I have had people comment on other videos that I've done about this and they tell me, hey, you're dead wrong. And it's like, okay, you can obviously get a little more performance out of this if you upgrade your upper control arms. But one of the biggest deals about why you have to upgrade your upper control arms when you get too big of a suspension is you can lose the ability to get your truck aligned, okay? I've driven this set with the factory upper control arms for 20,000 miles and I have had no issues with getting my truck aligned and no issues with abnormal wear and tear on my tires, okay? So take it with a grain of salt. Everybody thinks different things. I'm not the pro. I, I only know what I know from my own experience, but yeah, 20,000 miles on this thing, no problems with the stock control arms. I'm not campaigning for you to leave those. I'm just saying if you're running out of budget, and you want good suspension, you can do this without replacing the UCAs. Um, so that is kind of an advantage of this kit. It's very well dialed in for that. Um, it gives you that two and a half inches around the truck that's adjustable. Uh, so you're able to fit 35s in there without rubbing. Now that of course comes down to what rims you're running this on and what your offset is, because your experience can be different and it can also be different from tire brand to tire brand. I'm running BFG KO2s, uh, they don't actually measure a true 35, they measure 34 and a half, and I'm running them on a plus one offset fuel rim, um, and that has no rub. Never had rub, even if you bottom out the shock on rock crawling, it is never rubbed. So, one thing that we can cover here that's, I guess, a huge plus is these people that are looking for a kit because they, they don't know how to dive into building out their own kit from different brands. If you're looking for a clean and easy kit that you can install, 
that can get you room for 35s and get you an amazing ride. This kit is amazing for that. We'll also, I'll, I'll leave a link below to some of the ARB videos that they have on the technology that's in these shocks. It's very different than most of their competition. You know, you have Kings and you have Icons and you have all these brands, the Bilsteins and the, just everybody out there. There is a little bit of a difference with these because these are an internal bypass shock um, that's adjustable for both rebound and compression. At this stage of a package, you don't really have that in any of the competition. A lot of them you'll have um, adjustability for only one of those metrics. And due to the internal bypass technology on these, when it's at the full bottom of the shock stroke or at the very, very top of the stroke, you have a lot more dampening there and you have a lot less issues with the shock bottoming out hard. Uh, so it's a pretty incredible technology. I, you, they kind of would call it a racing technology that's been converted over. Uh, but it really is an amazing shock. Anybody that's used these can vouch for how good the ride is. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I would say is great about these guys. Great internal bypass. The price point is definitely a high-end upgrade. You know, you're priced out in that $3,500 range, and that's if you're doing the install yourself, of course. Uh, let's talk about the bad. I'm not even going to say bad. It's misleading a little bit. And what it is is this kit comes with... Uh, the Dakar leaf springs. So you would think, okay, it comes with a leaf spring upgrade for my truck, which is kind of true. But the leaf springs that kind of come with this package by default, in my opinion, are way too light duty for overlanding. If you're going to take the stock suspension off your Tundra and just stick this on there and add no additional weight to the vehicle whatsoever um, and not really tow anything very heavy, it's a great kit. And uh, I guess as a bolt-on kit that's supposed to replace the factory, then that's fair. So I really, like I said, I really probably shouldn't rate this as a bad thing. But the thing is, a lot of people are looking at the suspension and the hardcore nature of it, and it's an upgraded suspension for off-roading and for buying and all these things. Well, all those people that do those things tend to add weight to their vehicle with steel bumpers or a bed cage or a rooftop tent, or even if it's just your normal gear that you haul. Any of that extra weight that you add, in my opinion, overwhelms that back leaf spring, and you end up with a decent amount of sag in the back of your truck. So you can solve that by adding an add a leaf kit. Um, Toy Tech has them, can solve that problem. You can solve that problem by going with different leaf springs. But remember that this is a kit and comes with those leaf springs anyway. So I, I do think that that's a little bit of annoyance. If you're gonna run this kit for overlanding, you're going to be paying for a leaf spring. You're gonna need to be either adding a leaf uh, for a while with the 4Runner, they had an option for medium or hard leaf spring, so I'd go with the heavier duty leaf spring, but lately I haven't really seen that available for the Tundra. Um, so you guys, yeah, I mean, there's a million sites that are distributing this stuff. They all do it differently. If you guys know of one, put a link down below for everybody that might be considering this because I would definitely go with a heavier duty leaf spring than the one that comes in the standard package. So now let's get into the ugly. The ugly is I did just break um, one of my shocks and then I've had a problem with this in the past, but I wasn't able to pinpoint where it came from back then. In order to do this, I am gonna have to take you outside it is, I don't know, like 22 degrees out there or something. It's like full winter wonderland out here on the farm right now. I don't know what it's like where you guys are at, but it definitely makes filming outside interesting. Uh, it's pretty, but yeah. All right, I feel like every time I do a video on this truck, it's covered in mud, but I promise it's just because it actually gets used uh, yeah, we had a muddy day and then everything froze, so this stuff isn't coming off for now until I get this shock ripped off and replaced. Um, so let's check this out. If you guys remember, the BP-51 kit comes with a front coilover. Um, they're all adjustable for rebound and compression right on the actual shock body. Um, it's very adjustable on the top, so you have that uh, preload that you can do. Um, to adjust the ride height and be able to clear your tire and everything like that. I've had no issues whatsoever with the front shock um, at all in the entire life of um, one year of really running a lot of trails and frankly quite a bit of abuse. Um, so it's performed flawlessly, no issues there. Um, I do want to point out one thing. A lot of people ask if when you adjust the preload, um, that will adjust your ride height and it will compress your spring a little bit. 
And a lot of people ask, oh, well, how does that affect ride quality? Um, to, to understand this, it's a really common misconception. In fact, I had to get corrected by somebody on this myself. Um, those springs, as they compress, they still put off the same amount of force. So if it's, you know, a quarter compressed or halfway compressed, it's not getting harder and harder to compress. It, it stays the, it puts off the same amount of force all the way through its compression cycle, essentially. Um, and apparently they've been using that kind of spring in most shocks for quite a while. Um, so to put it in perspective, no, adjusting your preload is not going to adjust your ride quality. It's definitely going to adjust your ride height though. Um, so yeah, that's uh, one thing to understand that I think is pretty important. Okay, let's move back over here to the rear and I'm gonna show you where we're having all the problems. Okay, so on the rear of the Tundra, obviously this is not a coilover because you have the leaf springs and then you have the shock itself. And it does also have the reserve reservoir. Um, or the, the, yeah. You've got your reservoir right here. You've got your shock tied into the shock mount there and the main shock body going down. And you can't see it because it's kind of behind the tire, but way down there is where it is adjustable. Um, again, for your compression and rebound. Um, so, very cool. But if you notice, this shock definitely has an issue. You can see all the gunk on it and shininess. That's because it's lost basically all of its shock fluid. And what's happened here over the years is I kind of have, well, the one year that I've owned it, what I figured out is if you ride the shock through some very, very bumpy terrain, at the very top of this shock, up in here, is a bushing. Um, and that bushing, I have no idea if it's the bushing's fault or what it is. I'd uh, love to hear your guys' comments. But somehow, as this shock ages and you ride in rough terrain, there becomes an ability for the shock mount right here to come in contact with the actual hose that goes to your reserve tank. And when this and that collide, it causes a leak right here and you lose all your fluid down your shock body. Um, there should obviously, you know, like I said, these kits are designed for the actual vehicles. The Tundra kit's specific to a Tundra. So this is, in my opinion, a flaw in the design that that, that should ever be able to actually come in contact with each other. That's a huge deal and a huge problem. Um, as you can see, I've lost all my fluid. Now I've had a fluid leak in my rear shocks before in the past, but I couldn't figure it out. It just appeared that they randomly started leaking from this exact same spot. Um, the reason I was able to figure it out so obviously this time is whatever bump we hit um, that caused this to start leaking, you can see that it left a mark on the tip of the shock body where it kind of took all the paint off here. And then on the very top of this ring right here, you can see the same divot uh, where they, they hit each other. Now, there is a super easy fix for this. The very edge of that shock mount right here you can stick like a monkey wrench or, I mean, take your tire off, take your shock off and use a hammer. You can do whatever you want. And you literally can bend the edge of that lip out about a half an inch. And then if the shock totally fully compresses when it would normally hit it, it'll just go on the outside of it. It won't even touch it. So there's a very easy fix of just kind of bending that edge. Um, I found another guy that ran into the same problem and he had figured it out too, exactly what was happening, that these two things were colliding and causing the leaks. Um, and what he did is he actually used, um, I don't either, I don't know, a grinder probably, but he actually cut um, a little cutout right here um, to allow room for this to travel up into here and not not break. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. If any of you have had this shock, um, I would love to hear if you've had this problem. Even if you haven't, looking at this and seeing the problem the way that I'm seeing it, I'd love to hear your opinions on what exactly you think is causing it. That's my best guess. Um, I know it's hard to see in there, um, but the divot on the top of where that hose attaches to the main shock body um, is very obvious. I mean, you can see it in plain eye. You, it, you don't have to, uh, it's not gonna require a major investigation to understand that those two things came in contact with each other pretty hard. Um, so I think that's what it is. Let me show you the actual shock. One second, I've got one that's pulled off 
and I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is a shock um, that I pulled off. This is the one that was leaking before. Um, and if you can see the top, this is where it ties into the shock mount on this truck. Um, and this is this, I mean, it's definitely, I would call it a bushing. You guys probably know better than me, but this bushing is up inside of there. And when the whole shock fully compresses and there's a lot of pressure moving this thing up, I think that this either ages out a little bit and allows it to slide up a little more than it used to or should, or it just has more give from day one and it just depends on how hard you hit it. But as that slides up right here is the part, see this is mounted to the frame right here. Right here is where that shock mount comes into contact and hits the top of the slip and makes it leak right here. That is exactly what happened to this shock is it leaked right here. Um, so I've had two rear shocks that both started leaking here around the same time. Um, when I talked to them, they said, hey, we think it's a known issue. Um, I, they, I, they kind of alluded to the fact that it was probably just an early run of the shock that was defective. They sent me replacements. The replacements worked for eight, nine months with no issues. Um, and then on my recent trip to Moab, where I definitely got into some bumpy terrain, totally uh, hit that shock there, probably much harder than these, because these never leaked all their fluid. They just had a slow but steady leak. That one um, lost all its fluid literally in a day and a half, basically. Um, so yeah, I, there's an issue here between this design and the amount of clearance between here and the shock body. And either somebody's gonna reply to this video and go, hey, the shop, I actually had a shop install these. Um, it gets cold in here in Idaho and I don't have a good shop. So yeah, I actually had the pros literally did the installation and you guys know how that works. I mean, sometimes the people at the shops are pros and sometimes they're not, but um, essentially I did have pros do the installation um, and either somebody's gonna comment on this video and go, hey, it's installed wrong. They should have done X, Y, and Z, but I've checked it. I've checked the directions as far as I can tell. They were installed correctly, and it seems to be pretty consistent and pretty obvious that, that right here is a significant problem in the design and is hitting the shock body. So to fix that with bending it out, clipping it out, or go with a different set of suspension because you don't want this happening to you on the middle of uh, top of the world. It doesn't make for a great ride down the mountain. Okay, so closing thoughts on the BP-51 suspension. I mean, obviously on one level, it's kind of class leading suspension in this price point and level with the adjustability and the internal bypass. Uh, so that gives you a pretty superior ride to the competition that's in the same class and price point. Uh, on the flip side, uh, this was brand new tech. They literally went to work in a lab for four years and came out the other side with this. And with that, um, they tried to build kits specifically for a lot of different models. And obviously they didn't nail that perfectly. Um, so that's a problem. Um, as far as the defect that's affecting the Tundra, I never ran into this issue on a 4Runner. Uh, my buddies that have this on a Jeep have never had problems either. On the 4Runner, I ran it for over a year in very hard terrain, so I don't think you're running into the same issues on the 4Runner and the Tacoma kit. I think it's Tundra specific, um, but as I said, it's an easy fix uh, if you're willing to slightly modify your vehicle in a way that you shouldn't really need to, to after spending that much money on suspension. Uh, I will give you, tell you guys this, ARB stands by their products. I've never had any problems replacing these under warranty, um, but I've also never had them admit to this being a real problem. Um, they've always just kind of explained it away with, hey, maybe it was a early run of the product and you know we've got our kinks worked out and everything now so I'd, I'd love to hear from them at some point um I'd, it'll be interesting to see when i get the replacement shock if it comes with a thicker bushing um and then maybe the problem's solved we never have to talk about this again um, but yeah all in all great suspension kit i like that it's a kit for people that don't truly you know know how to build a kit themselves um, that's very convenient but now we've got this one detractor it's a problem there's not really a way to explain it away. Some of you guys in the comments are gonna, you know, rightfully be outraged that, hey, you know, when you spend that much money on suspension, it better work and it better be perfect. And other people understand that 
engineering uh, is tough, especially when you're covering multiple vehicles, multiple platforms, and multiple years. So I'm not trying to give them any excuses. It is what it is. I think it's important for you guys to all know this, know what you're getting into, and know what you need to do if you're running this suspension and you want it to last for a long time on a Tundra. So thanks for tuning in. I hope this is helpful. Um, talk to you guys soon.